repairing my old Burgess bandsaw. After many years of service, my trusty Burgess bandsaw finally stopped working. The problem was that the blade guides had worn away completely until one of them just fell apart. This is how I repaired it. Just so viewers do not get confused, this is not my Burgess bandsaw. It is something quite different. This is a Draper horizontal vertical metal cutting bandsaw and this is far more substantial than the smaller Burgess model. I'm showing this bandsaw because at the time I was looking at the blade guide arrangement. This is my old Burgess bandsaw and it's a great machine. The blade guide arrangement is entirely different. This view was taken after I fixed the blade guides. And here is a view underneath the machine to show the original blade guide arrangement. It was pointless showing the original top blade guide because it had fallen into two pieces. The guide underneath is a very hard piece of steel with two very hard pieces of steel as washers which guide the blade. And the problem is the very hard piece of steel has worn all the way through on the top one so there's none of it left. I could copy this part exactly and fit a version of it to the top of the machine but I've decided not to do that. I'm going to use a ball race for the blade to press against when you're cutting. But in the meantime, I've removed the bottom fitting to see how it's put together. This is the bracket that normally supports the top blade guide, and here's the bottom blade guide in my hand, which is still in one piece but only just. As part of assembly, there is a felt pad, which I think you're supposed to oil periodically, but I've never oiled this felt pad because I didn't want the oil to contaminate the wood I was cutting. This is the bottom blade guide shaft, and as you can see, it's nearly cut all the way through. And this has been done by the back of the blade, not the front bit with the teeth, the back part. Here I have a random collection of bits and pieces on the bench. You can see the original blade guide parts, including the one that's chopped in half, along with a couple of ball racers and some bolts, all of which are the wrong size for the job. What I intend to do is rummage through the bits and pieces that I have, and believe me, I have a lot of bits and pieces, and try and find something suitable to make a blade guide. Here's one part that's definitely not suitable. It's a maker's plate from 1992 that I never used on my 7.25 inch gauge black 5. I didn't find too many suitable things in this drawer. I decided instead to look in one of my plastic boxes, which specifically contains ball racers. And immediately I found a matched pair of shrouded ball racers, half an inch outside diameter by 3 16 of an inch bore. And here's one of the ball racers positioned on a 3 16 stud which is conveniently threaded 2BA at both ends. I selected two of these studs, one for the top guide and one for the bottom. Here is my initial plan. I've put the stud through the hole in the guide bracket and used a lock nut at the other side to hold it rigidly in position. I'm going to fix this bandsaw in stages. The first thing I'm going to do is assemble something that will be proof of concept to see if it works. And here it is. The arrangement is self-explanatory. The ball race is positioned behind the blade. And to avoid any further confusion for the viewer who wrote in and said, why is your blade guide in front of the blade? In this clip, you can clearly see that it isn't. It's behind the blade. This is the top blade guide, and this is the underside blade guide. Or at least it will be when I assemble it. I'm using a barco spanner on the nut, and then I used the socket on the other end and really tightened it up. So I don't think it's going to vibrate loose. A quick message to the experts and keyboard warriors whose fingers must be vibrating over the keyboard currently. Yes, oddly enough, I am aware that there isn't any side support for the blade at this point. As I mentioned, this is a proof of concept before I go any further. At this moment, my time is at a premium, so I don't want to spend too much time repairing this bandsaw. Apart from some personal health issues that I need to get sorted out, mainly because I is well old in it. I've also been busy moving lights from the new extension up to the workshop and fitting different lights in the extension. I apologise to my kind Patreon supporters because there will be some gaps in the number of videos I put up. I normally edit videos in the mornings, but on Saturday morning I'll be sat inside an MRI scanner. I look forward to that. I just love clever gadgets. This, for instance, is a clever gadget, even though the blade guide's not right, but it's cutting the piece of mahogany very well. I'm almost surprised. In this clip I'm cutting this piece of mahogany cross grain and the blade seems to be quite happy staying where it is against the ball race. And this old blade is long past its best. When I checked the free hand cut, thankfully my calibrated eye didn't let me down and as you can see it's perfectly square. 
I'm going to leave the bottom blade guide just as it is. This is the top one that's dismantled once again on the bench. The two large washers are made from hardened steel, but as the ball racers are half an inch outside diameter, these washers are too small, so I need to make some more. With a larger diameter piece of steel in the chuck in my Boxford lathe, first of all I cleaned up the front by facing it across with a cutting tool, then I centre drilled it, and here, using a 3 16th of an inch diameter drill, there's now a nice neat hole part of the way down the centre of the piece of steel bar. In this clip I'm using an end mill in my tailstock chuck and you can tell by the noise and vibration the lathe is going far too fast so I slowed the lathe down using back gear and now it's cutting a lot better. The lubrication I'm using is WD-40 which is not the best lubricant in the world but it did the trick and now I have a recess in the piece of steel. This sequence shows the parting off operation I do speed the video up though towards the end just to get through it in a reasonable time because this is not a quick job. In industry with the proper tooling and equipment it's probably a lot quicker than this but in my home workshop I have to run the lathe in back gear to slow it down so I don't snap the tool. Now the video footage is running eight times faster than normal you can see what's happening. I'm using a lot of WD-40 to keep the part lubricated and in the end it parts off all right. That's one done, one to go. I'm facing across the front of the work to make sure it's perfectly flat because when you use a parting tool they can wander and you may get a domed appearance. I then repeated the counterbore using this half an inch diameter milling cutter. As you can see it's wandering about a bit I have to give it plenty of lubrication to make sure it cuts cleanly. This is not the best way to do the job, I should really use a boring tool. That would make it much more accurate, but there's no point, this is only a recessed washer as a temporary measure for a blade guide on an old bandsaw. If this is successful, I will remake these parts in silver steel and then harden them. After parting off the second recess washer, I cleaned up both of them on a piece of wet to dry sandpaper on the bench. And yes, I do know I should be using a surface plate, but this will do the job. Now the ball race fits inside the recess washer and all I need to do now is set the gap. I need one washer less than half an inch in diameter at each side of the ball race. And once I've bolted the ball race in position, the washer will only put pressure on the centre part of the ball race, which will allow it to spin freely inside the recess washers. I think that this should do the job even better than the original one did once it's all bolted back into position. Best thing to do is test it. Here, even though the blade is well past its best and nearly ready for replacement, it's cut in this mahogany planking with ease. And as you can see, the outer parts are not rotating very much, but the ball race will be rotating with the pressure of the blade against it. I'm quite pleased with this. Even on a thicker piece of mahogany, it's cutting much better than it did previously. OK, mechanically it's not perfect, but it never was in the first place. I'm just going to leave this as it is and just see how it works for a while. I'll revisit the repair if the blade guide malfunctions again. I continued to test the machine's cutting capability using some thicker pieces of mahogany and every one I cut was fine and nothing went wrong and the blade didn't snap. Stay safe, thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful. Please take the time to visit my main steam models website and click on the section of the website that says Video Playlists. And by doing that, you can find other videos that you may like to watch. And by using the playlists, you can actually watch the videos back to back.